Hi guys, checking in here. I am out with Brittany. We are at our third house. I kind of forgot about y'all the first two, but neither one of them were the home. So let's go check this one out. So it's like this little sidewalk to the front of the homes. And then there's like another little back alley behind which gives you access to the garage. And then there's street parking. There's lots of neighborhoods like this. Um, they're cute. So this yard needs some manicuring going on. Um, six one two five, y'all. Where is it at? Two three, so two five at the end here. So we walk in, and you have formal area over here. And then you have your family room, fireplace, which is open to the kitchen. Um, backyard, let's see, there's a detached garage. It's, it's real hot, y'all. I'm not going all the way out there, but there's grass back there. <laughs> back of the front door. Let's go up the stairs. Oh, if you're any taller than I am, hit your head on the wall. All right. And then three bedrooms upstairs. First bedroom. Second bedroom. We have a full bath in your primary. <laughs> well, at least they have a soaking tub. So what do we think overall for this one? Uh, I think... No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? It's not bad. It's not it. No. I mean, it needs a lot of updating. It does. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like the post office, the separation. The separation. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad if this was, like, meant to be, like, the formal area. Mm -hmm. And that was, well, I guess, I mean, technically you could do either way. I'm sure they use this as, like, family room living space. Yeah. And left mm -hmm. that. Maybe just do, like, a... I would just put like a breakfast table or something over there. I don't even know. But. All right, y'all. I am all done showing with Brittany. We looked at four houses. None of them really felt like the winner. The one that we're leaving was probably the best one that we saw today. Um, but she wasn't just like gung-ho. Like, oh, yeah, this is it. So. Whew thirsty y'all y'all already know it's hot let's say it's 98 degrees out here um so now i am headed back in the opposite direction i'm gonna stop at one two or three maybe communities i have an appointment at three o'clock uh oh y'all y'all shaking i have an appointment at three o'clock back in tomball which is the other side of town like right now i'm like in mission bend area if you know anything about houston um, so I'm going to stop at one place before I get there. That's kind of like Cyprus and take a look at some homes for Antonio. Um, am I turning on this net? Yes. And then, um, see if he likes any of that. It's actually the same builder, Centex. Actually, no, do they have a Lincoln? Whatever. It's the same builder, same style of neighborhood that Travis is building in, just a different location. And actually, he might be interested in the location that Travis is in, too. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Anyways, going to go take a look, get him on FaceTime, give him some, some virtual tours, and then head to um, the other builder in Tomball is K Kehov, K Hovaney, and um, that's who actually built Alexis and Jay's house that I closed on last month. I really like them as a builder. 
Um, so yeah, I believe we're looking more for inventory home for him. He doesn't really want to build. Um, there is inventory. Oh look, there's K-Hop right there. There's um, inventory available, y'all. The crazy thing is, I don't know if y'all might remember. I think this was, I think this might be from like the May vlog or maybe even April. I was out looking with Brianna and we went to a neighborhood in Katy and they had a wait list of like 60 people um, to, to build because of course everything was just sold out and now here we are three months later and they have 48 houses in inventory so it's like the way things change in a period of time is crazy but anyways all right we are at Centex Kingfield community so like I was saying I believe this is the same collection as Braemar Village just a different location all right y'all we are in Magnolia. I'm here to check out Kehav, but they have a Castle Rock um, building over here as well. So if they're there, I'll probably pop in and see if they have anything that meets Antonio's criteria. Um, I really, I just be driving sometimes. Y'all don't even know what part of Magnolia I'm in. I gotta look in the map. Seems kind of deep into Magnolia, so. We'll have to get that figured out. Hello, good morning, September 2nd. I am here in a parking lot at the vet waiting for my dog to get whatever he got going on, going on. Um, but <laughs> laptop in my lap. I really need to get like one of them car desk computer things, you know, like the police officers have in their cars. Um, I had a consultation this morning with um, someone that wants to lease. They um, have evacuated from New Orleans because Ida just happened last week. Um, so they evacuated from New Orleans and they decided that they're just going to move to Houston. Um, a friend of mine recommended them to me, which is always so nice. So I'm here about to find some lease listings for us to go out this weekend and hopefully lock something down pretty quickly for them. Um, just literally just got another text message about somebody else that wants to do a lease. Um, so gonna probably do both of those. And then yesterday, um, talked to Antonio a little bit more about detail of location and price point of where they want to be the house in magnolia the k hob house that i went to look at um well they didn't actually have the floor plan there to look at but i think that's a little too far out for them um but i think that's a little too far out for them his girlfriend really likes the Katy area, so I'm going to try to stick within that area and then we also talked about price point and budget so remember y'all, although you may be pre-qualified, pre-approved for a certain price point, a max price point, which his is, I believe, 300,000, he doesn't want to really be spending more than $2,000 a month on his total mortgage. So um, $300,000 house is going to definitely put him over that. So we talked about that. So I was like, okay, well then that gives me more of a price point that I really need to stick with, you know, somewhere between 260, 280, um, give or take HOAs and taxes. So um, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to have that conversation so I can really narrow down just a little bit more because our search, our net was really wide. And when your net is really wide like that, um, it can make it can make the the searching a lot more tedious because even if you have like a wide selection of areas but very specific on what you need in a home then that's one thing but if you have a wide net of location areas but not as super specific on a home then there's it, it's just like okay it's a little bit of a lot so glad we kind of figured some of that out um and that's really it for today um i'm tired 
I um, personal life business here. I drove to Beaumont, Texas last night, like at 1030. It's a two hour drive from where I live um, to pick up my friend who also evacuated from New Orleans. So she drove, she had somebody drive her from New Orleans to Beaumont and then I went to Beaumont to pick her up and then we came back to my house. So <laughs> I had a, a long night, you know, driving late night and I hate driving late night. Um, so I need a nap. So I'm not really trying to do much of a lot of ripping and running today at all. So computer work it is. Good September 3rd, y'all. So I'm here at a new construction home um, looking at this for Antonio. Remember, he's the one that is in Florida. Um, so I just FaceTimed and showed them the house. So they're looking for four bedrooms. This one is three and a study. Um, and I'm trying to really decipher, do they really need four technical bedrooms or do they just need four enclosed spaces? So I'm gonna show y'all the house cause you know, I don't really be showing y'all actual houses anymore. So this is the house, a nice one story. They're over there building a two story. They're using this power on that house over there. So it's gonna get a little loud. All right, but let's enter. So upon entrance, this is where you have the study or the flex space, whatever you want to call it. It does not actually have a door, but that is an easy fix. So this could be used as the fourth bedroom if they wanted to, or an office space. It does not have a closet, but we already just talked about that. Do they really need a closet or actual bedroom, or do they just need four rooms? So here's a closet here, and then this is a powder bath. So a half bathroom. Here is your utility closet right off of the garage entrance. And then the kitchen, I really like the kitchen because it has the island and it also has large countertop space here with lots of cabinetry double cabinets on both sides of the islands your refrigerator will go there pantry stove microwave dishwasher and then in this corner we have another closet so lots of storage space a full bathroom this is really nice i like that they did the matching floor tile for the backsplash of the shower and then the bedrooms they're decent sizes, not, you know, massive, but not too, too small. You can comfortably probably fit a queen bed in there or a full. And then another one. So those are two official bedrooms because those both have closets. And then this allows for a lot of space as well. So they can do a dining table here. And then you have your living space, of course, couch and whatnot. And here we have another closet. And here is the primary bedroom. It's a good size. It'll look a little larger once they lay down some flooring in here. And then we still have the same tile throughout. Double sinks. Um, walk-in closet, toilet, and then tub and shower. So that's the house. I think they had it listed at 310 and they just lowered it to right under 300. I think 295, 297, something like that. So it's cute. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Hello, it is September 5th the day after Beyonce's birthday. <laughs> and y'all, I just went to show a house and there's a squatter, y'all, a whole squatter. First time I've ever experienced that one. So it's a lease house that I'm was showing, well, attempting to show um, for some clients that were referred to me. They, um, are, they evacuated from New Orleans and of course now they're trying to find a home. So we go to this home to look at it and I call the agent or whatever, and they're like, well, technically it's available, but you can't really show it because somebody's squatting. And I'm like, oh, 
okay y'all got a squatter so basically y'all know what a squatter is right where somebody illegally moves into the house and refuses to evacuate so and I looked y'all there's a car in the driveway that's what made me even hesitant to like go up to uh because there was no sign in the yard and there was a car in the driveway and so I was like well is this the house like what's really going on and yes it was the house but the license plate, y'all, the license plate said Louisiana. <laughs> and I'm like, did somebody evacuate Louisiana, come to Houston, find a house that was for lease, act like they wanted to see it, and they just moved themselves in? Like, that's what my, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just coming up with theories here. But, you know, tough times call for desperate measures sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, anyways anywho so i did show them two other properties or three other properties um so hopefully they'll make a decision on one of them the last one that we wanted to see with the squatter um was in a really nice neighborhood good school districts they got three young kids but that was not gonna be an option so so that's that for the lease now i'm headed to go meet Brittany to go look at three houses um remember she's buying um and we're just having you know a little bit of a tough time trying to find something nice in her price point so we're just gonna keep looking until we find the one and hopefully our bid will get accepted and she will be under contract and we will be closing on a house for her and her family at the end of this year fingers crossed prayers up Today is Friday, September 10th. I am headed out to meet Brittany. Um, I feel like today might be the day. I feel like today might be the day that we find the perfect home for her and her family. Um, I don't know. I'm just being super optimistic. We've been out a few times and just nothing has spoken to Brittany and her hubby. So there's one house that I really... Um, I personally like a lot um, and hopefully they'll like it too and hopefully it's available I really need to call the agent to see what's going on with it but I'm headed to Missouri City we have and then we're heading to like the last house which is the one that I personally really like um, is a little further northwest than what they had been looking as far as location wise um, but it's a great house it's right at their max price point of 200000 um, and it doesn't look from the, the photos like it needs a ton of work, which is always good. Um, so yeah, y'all, let's go out and take a look and cross our fingers that today is the day. rainy Monday September 13th it's early it's 9 50 in the morning I'm waiting for Brittany to get here we're gonna go take a look at this house I'm on the door. Um, tropical storm Nicholas or somebody is out here in the streets of Gulf Coast about to run through Houston so I don't really know how much showing of houses I'm going to be able to do really today, tomorrow. It's supposed to rain the entire week and it's supposed to, you know, y'all know Houston floods really bad. So I was able to make it out here to see this house. Um, and hopefully Brittany likes it. Um, her and her husband, hopefully they can agree on something. But when I was talking to the listing agent this morning um they are calling for all offers by 5 p.m today on this home they have multiple offers they're asking 210 um so we're gonna go in here and just be super optimistic and see what happens
y'all, is really one of the nicest that we've seen in a while, just overall. Let's see what she said. This is the outside of the home. Here's Brittany now. So there's a stoplight right there. Um, and like literally right there to the left is the um, highway. So easy highway access. Cul-de-sac right behind her. Yeah. It's a nice little neighborhood. A lot of people. Um, Today is September 14th, the day after yesterday. We submitted that offer yesterday. And I got the email today that they did not select our offer. You know, it is what it is. Um, so today is Hurricane Nick, but it's just starting to rain again now. It really hasn't rained, it's 5.44 p.m. It hasn't really rained since earlier this morning. Houston. Houston, Houston and its suburbs didn't get too hard. My little brother lives in Lake Jackson, which is going towards like Galveston and of the water. So um, he lost power and some things like that. But thankfully, thank the heavens, it hasn't been too extreme. Um, so hopefully this will just pass tonight and then Brittany and I can get back out and look at houses tomorrow. Um, I just, although like there really wasn't any activity today, you just honestly never know. And I did not want to take the chance of going out and it would have been like really heavy downpour rains in certain areas that I'm not really used to and, you know, just getting caught up in any of that. So today was a better safe than sorry type of day. Um, I did a lot of online training things that I needed to catch up on. Oh, I also learned about this. I also learned about this program that um, was really exciting. Of course, a few stipulations to it, but it's um, it's it's called Ribbon Ribbon Cat. Y'all just got my nails in. Are they cute? Anyways, it's called Ribbon Something Ribbon Ribbon Something. But basically, um, it it um, it turns your finance offer into a cash offer for you to be able to present your offer as cash to a seller. A lot of more details about that. Um, I spoke with um, somebody from, a rep from the company today and kind of went over in detail, you know, thought it would be a good idea for Brittany, which I do still think it would be a good idea for her um, because the gist of it basically is, is that you already have to be a pre-qualified buyer, right? Which Brittany is. And so it really helps you in, one of two ways one either you're at a price point where you're having multiple offers um like Brittany is and a lot of people shopping for homes you know below a million dollars maybe i don't even know but a lot of people are in multiple offer situations um so of course cash and then it also allows for no contingencies outside of your inspection report so no finance contingencies no appraisal contingencies they waive all of that the only thing that they want is an inspection report to make sure that anything structural or electrical is handled but besides that they gonna close regardless right so of course if you present that type of offer to a seller they're gonna say oh this is great this is really really good so that's super attractive right um, so but of course they come with the feet as well turn my wipers back on um, so you can submit that and depending on whatever amount of time that you put on the contract for a closing date so they say they can close in 21 days that's what they do in Texas. They send some other states, they could potentially do 14 days, but in Texas, it's a 21 day close. So while you still have that going on, or kind of like on the back burner, you would still be going through underwriting and all of that with your original loan people, right? So yeah, so if your original loan people can close by said closing date per contract, then Ribbon does not have to pay for the house for you right so for that they charge you one percent and that's just basically 
one percent of the home price and that's just they're they're just charging you for using their services for having the ability to you know make your offer more attractive because really and truly they didn't do nothing for you except make it look like whatever but you know they got to get their money so that's one option second thing is so if the way if your lender is not able to close you by per contract date and ribbon does have to pay cash for the property then they charge you 2.4 percent of the cost of the home um they buy the home for you and then they give you uh six months to finish up whatever you needed to finish up to actually buy the home back from them at the same price that they bought it right so they're still only making truly a nominal fee but but you're now paying them rent which the rent price for the home is probably a lot higher than what your mortgage would have been and they tell you all these numbers up front so now when I called um, after I spoke with them and I submitted all the Britney stuff so when they want to see her pre-approval letter to tell you how much they'll pre-approve her for they pre-approved her for the same amount the same $200,000 then they also want to see the house that you're considering putting the offer in on so they do their own evaluation of the house so the house that I sent them was $200,000 they said the max that they would be willing to pay for this home is two hundred ten. dollars Britney's approved for two hundred. dollars so even if she wanted to offer the two ten, dollars she would have to make the difference of the ten thousand cash right um so so after i got that information i was like okay like this isn't bad like this gives somebody a lot of wiggle room if they have a lot of cash a lot of save coins but not really um but can't be super competitive in the actual negotiation process and the offer process, right? Because what you're pre pre approved for is what you're pre approved for. You can have all the cash in the world and still only have a certain pre approval amount, right? So they, I guess they ended up calling the lender, sending the lender email, whatever, whatever. The lender calls me and they're like, well, you know, we've never worked with this program before, but to bring to your attention which we've talked about before when i um sold christian's house back in december right um technically if 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 ribbon has to buy this property they would be buying it as an investment right and fha rules remember per fha um if it's an investor and they're trying to sell the home, they cannot sell to FHA until, they were saying six months. I clearly remember it being like a 91 day rule, but I didn't even bother like getting into that. The whole point being is that even if it would only take like a week or two for them to actually close on Britney's financing and then go back and buy it from Ribbon, we wouldn't be able to do that because since she has the FHA financing, we would now have to wait that time period again for them to be able to sell it to her using her FHA financing. So that sounds like a lot just coming up out of my mouth. I hope y'all understood <laughs> because it was a lot, but yeah, so that's just basically where we're at with that right now. Um, I do think it would be a really good program for even if you were conventional or maybe just, um, I don't even think VA has that like type of time period that FHA has, uh, really have to look into that more. So I think it's a good option when, you know, we have the, the right, the right set of stuff working around it. Um, but I just thought it was really cool. Uh, I'm sure there might be other programs out there like that, but I learned about this one this morning just randomly in um, a training class that I was in. So I decided to do a little more research on it, and that's what I found out. So I wanted to share with you all um, that information. Um, so I don't know if we really be using that for Brittany, but you never know. I might use it for myself in the future or just whatever. So, yeah. That's it, y'all. About to uh, head home and relax and see if I can get some showings scheduled for Brittany tomorrow. People, right. it's Wednesday morning, 9 30. 
There's Brit, me, and Salem. We are here to look at a property. Let's go. All right, y'all. So after I left Brittany, I decided to come out to Katy um, to look for just more communities for Antonio. Um, yeah, he mentioned, you know, wanting to be in Katy. So I was like, all right, let me just come out of here. I just walked a really nice floor plan, but it's a bit above their budget. Um, that was their model home. But I do have two here that they have an in inventory. Um, one is ready now. It's on the water for 305, four beds, two and a half bath. And then another one is still currently being built. Um, it's not on the water. It's four bedrooms, two and a half baths, less square feet for 290. So it's happy day after yesterday. <laughs> it's Thursday, September 16th, 7th, 16th. Um, headed to go meet Brittany. We have two houses to look at. Yesterday's house she decided against. That was, well, you know what? I don't know if she's fully decided against it. She didn't actually tell me. Um, but she said other houses to look at, so I'm assuming that means she didn't want to um, move forward with the one from yesterday. Um, so yeah, y'all, just working, just lots of driving when it's um, the actual shopping process of the home. Ooh, let's go. y'all so we, Brittany likes the house not sure if her husband's gonna like it but as we're walking through the house we get a notification that the property is now um, option pending well pending continue to show not even option pending so I just text the agent and I was like we like the house but you just got to offer like why you know why did you not let me know you know if you had a deadline or what was up and she was like oh well they're supposed to be closing on the 29th, which today is the 16th. So clearly they got a cash offer. He's like, but I want to do continue to show just in case, you know, that doesn't go through, which I get, but you know, like, give me a heads up or something. Okay. This one is cute, y'all. Another town home. I like how there are different colors out here. Neighborhood looks nice. Hmm, I wonder what the inside looks like. Good day, good people. It is Friday, September 17th. We are having a light admin day today. Um, I did a lot of work on the computer this morning. It's like 1.20 now and I'm literally just leaving um, and about to go hit the road. So just a lot of documentation that I needed to update. Um, <clears throat> And now I'm about to go to the post office and mail off some cards to some thank you cards to people that have recently leased with me. Um, I don't really do, of course, closing gifts for leases, um, but I do like to send thank you cards with a little gift card in them. Um, so I'm about to go do that. And then I also have two other cards to mail off for one year home anniversaries, closings that I had last year, I think next week makes one year for two of these clients so i'm gonna mail them off just some um, happy one year home anniversary cards um yeah that's really it we did submit an application for Brittany yesterday not an application lord we submitted a offer for Brittany yesterday um so of course it's a multiple offer situation again um, I believe I showed y'all it was the town home. Um, the second one we saw. I don't know. But anyways, whatever house that y'all see, it's that one. Because I'm not even going to put both of them in there. So we submitted an offer. The house is 198 We went ahead and just did $200,000. Um, y'all don't know. That's her max price point for one. And the comps don't really provide um comparables to even offer more than that 
um, but we did do a 21 day closing, 14 day buyer financing, um, and of course not asking for anything. So just making the offer as competitive as possible. Um, so just waiting for a response from that. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. Pretty much it. So check in with y'all later. Hello, good people. Happy Saturday. Hope all is well with you all over there on the YouTube world and beyond. <laughs> um, I am out Saturday, September 18th. I am out today um, doing some more virtual tours on resale homes this time for Antonio and Brianna. Um, so we just looked at one. It doesn't necessarily meet their needs. He needs four enclosed rooms. They don't technically have to be bedrooms, but either three in a study or four bedrooms minimum, basically. So this one is a nice house. Wasn't necessarily my favorite layout, um, but it also only had just three bedrooms. Um, so that won't work. So we're headed to another one. Y'all, so just went to one house. Um, really nice. They, this isn't even why I'm telling y'all about this house, but I'm gonna tell y'all right now anyway while it's on my mind. These people are asking for a lease back on their property, right? We've talked about lease backs before, where once you close on the home, the seller stays in the house um, and you're leasing the house back to them. But they are requesting a free lease back, which I mean, you know, like it's a seller's market. You know, it's not necessarily common to tell folks that you want a free lease back, but that's what they are requesting. Um, but there is, it's 235, great price point, very nice area, very well kept up house. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't vlog it because one, I was on FaceTime and two, it was just way too many people in the house. Um, but speaking of all the people in the house, why I'm even telling y'all is open house etiquette, right? It was an open house. So open house etiquette. You go to that open house with yourself, maybe your spouse, and maybe your children. Do not bring your pet to somebody's open house. Like, who does that foolishness? This woman is literally walking around in somebody's house that they still live in. This isn't... <sighs> Phone's ringing, y'all. Hold on. So, before my phone rang. So, yes, if you go to an open house, please leave your pets at home. This is not a service animal. You know, I understand service animals need it. But your pet, you don't know what type of allergies or likes or dislikes that the owner of that home may have. And you have the nerve to come into somebody's house, although your pet was not on the floor. She was holding it the whole time. The whole dog, and I'm a dog lover, y'all. That's disrespect. Good morning, y'all. I don't think I checked in with y'all today. It's September 20th, Monday. I'm out with Brittany and her family looking at a house is plural I don't like these doorknobs like I can never get the key out anyways um, this house has a massive yard via the photos and uh, I'm ready to see what it looks like all right yeah so I have this whole covered part and then all of that over there too like they had a little dog run over there grill need some fence work for sure a shed that looks like whatever wow and then all of this still this is it's this is on a cul-de-sac y'all so i guess it got all that extra space if this was built Nowadays, they would have turned this into like six houses. <laughs> hey, it's me again. Um, I've taken Brittany out this morning. I haven't heard back from her, so I don't think any of those houses were a hit for them. <laughs> me and her really liked the first one, um, but her husband was, he wasn't too keen on it. So, you know, they, they got to work that out. Um, and then I have another... Um, client or technically customer because she has inside my bra um but i have another person that i'm working on getting pre-approved and 
Um, long story short, she wants more than what she can afford. As far as her financial portfolio, you know, everything looks good. Credit score is good. Savings is good. DTI is, you know, low. Um, but she just doesn't have a lot of income. And I think that's where a lot of people um, just kind of miss the mark on when understanding truly how much house that they can afford. So she desires um, a new construction home that's probably high 300,000s from just what she's been describing as what she wants. Um, but she can, what she can comfortably afford is a thousand dollars a month for mortgage. And that just does not equate. There's, there's, there's no way that that equates based on a, your standard, um, FHA conventional loan, right? But because I'm Alexia and I be knowing what's going on in these Houston streets, (laughs) there is a program called Houston Community Land Trust Program. And just FYI for anybody that might be watching this vlog and you're not in Texas or not just in Houston, um, they have this program in multiple cities and multiple states nationwide. So just just putting your city name, Community Land Trust Program, and look to see if it's available where you are. But basically what, but what this program does is... Once you qualify with your lender, you kind of want to sign up for both of them at the same time because you have to qualify for the program. And of course, you still have to qualify for a regular mortgage loan. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into everything because I I don't know every every step of it. But basically, um, you can then qualify. So once so, for instance, this customer that I'm talking about, right, if she has pretty much qualified probably for about a little less than $200,000 loan-wise, right? Purchase price on a home. Houston Community Land Trust Program will then give her an additional $100,000 on top of what she has been pre-approved for, even an additional $150,000 if it is zoned to a certain um, school rating, A or B school rating. Um, But the catch to this program is, is that you will own the the improvement on top of the land so the house but you won't actually own the land itself so for some people you want to own the land right like buying property the the thing is you want to own the land but some people just want a better area a nicer house you know this may be their first time buying and this you know is probably the only way that they can really get what they can afford um it really is it's just all going to be dependent on you and your mindset on it but i spoke with her about the program kind of gave her a brief overview of how it works and she was interested and she was like yeah i could do that you know um and the good thing about it is if you decide to sell your home later um you basically have to sell it at the improvement costs like the lower price point so you're not selling the land because you don't technically own the land i do think there's something in the deed like after 100 years or something 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 but anyways so i'm trying to get her to um sign up for this program they could potentially give us an additional 100 to one hundred fifty thousand dollars on top of her current pre-approval amount um so then we can start home shopping um with this also it is going to be location specific because you have to be the home has to be located where you're paying taxes to the city of Houston because it's a city of Houston program and you also have to be paying taxes to Harris County so um yeah Uh, I just want to give y'all that little update you know I called the lender that she's been working with um she she really likes him and he hadn't heard of the program so, you know, I just sent him the link and I said, hey, do do your due diligence, do whatever you need to do as far as company, your company and see if, you know, you, you can work with this program or not. Um, and so I can keep her with that lender because the, <laughs> I always get tongue tied saying it, the Houston Community Land Trust HCLT program, um, 
they I think they have their own lenders, but you can still work with an outside lender as long as like, you know, they they do whatever they need to do to be a part of the program. So, you know, just just another day real estate and um I'm reading this book here. This is Jane Bond, How to Land Your First Million Dollar Listing. That is a goal of mine for next year. So trying to put the knowledge where it goes, trying to get it together up here. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, yeah, back to my book. Just wanted to give y'all that update. Hello, vlogging vlog. Long time no talk. I haven't updated y'all in quite a while, but we're dwindling down on the end of the month. It's September 26th. And I am um, in Katy, Texas right now. I have two properties to show Brittany. It's a Sunday morning. I just left church for the first time in a long time. Um, so yeah, let's check this out before Brittany gets here. some yard maintenance um, for Brittany and then after this I have a new buyer client to go meet about 30 minutes away from here so let's check it out. Hello y'all it's time to end out September's vlog it's October 1st now and I always forget to end the vlog but September was a bit of a slow month well slow in the fact that um let's see slow as in um <laughs> Slow as in um, just a lot of house showing and not a lot of under contracts. I did do a lot of leases in September. That's for sure. I think I did four or five leases in September. Um, but as far as on the home buying and selling side, I've been working with Brit uh, Brittany for sure. Lots of showings, um, just that price point and just trying to get her under contract and then um antonio is really waiting for him to get here in town so we'll see if september and october actually turn into one vlog um i feel like it might if it does turn into one <clears throat> if it does turn into one vlog just watch the next clip if it does not as always thank you for watching make sure you subscribe like and share and if you know anybody in the houston area looking to buy sell lease invest send them my way thanks